was nice. He reminds me a bit of Oscar. Uh, there was one more direction we didn't actually check out yet, so let's go there first. And grab a glass. I guess we'll do that. I've got some vodka, so. Maybe I'll get a drink later. Shove it in my pocket. So the exit. So Madame Romanski is outside on the pier, so we'll have to leave here. The door will be locked. Yeah. So that door is locked. See if we can. We need to input a code. So, uh, Madame Romanski's code was one two seven zero. Darn it! But that doesn't work. Wouldn't work. Just as I thought. Because she uh, obviously is already outside. So we'll have to see if we can find a different code somewhere. Aha. Uh -huh. Never mind me. This looks like a, an access card of some kind. Yeah, temporary code zero nine six eight. So now we can go outside. Um, meet up with Madame Romanski, ask her if she wants to come back with us to uh, the industrial complex where uh, the director uh, wants to uh, see her perform because she visited that place long ago. Because of the salt print, we have to wear a, a mask before we can go outside. I don't know how healthy it would really be to be there. Doesn't look like that. Looks like that needs a bell. There she is. Madame Romanski? Madame Helena Romanski? Who are you? What do you want? I'm sorry to disturb you, ma'am. My name's Kate Walker. I've come on behalf of Frank Malkovich. Ah, oh, Malkovich, the old son of a gun. Are you one of his relatives? <laughs> Not exactly. He's a good friend of my mother's. He told me you might be here in Arrowbad. I'm American, a lawyer. To what do I owe your visit? You have come so far. It must be important. Indeed it is. I have very delicate and pressing business to attend to. I have just left. Later, my dear, later. I have a slight headache. This hotel must have a pinch, so I have to go in. Please, could you be so kind as to call my valet? Your valet? Of course. Oh. You! Oh. Back here again? How dare you show your damn face round here? Get out of here immediately! Please. I absolutely must find... Miss Romanski? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. She managed to lie her way in here. Don't matter how vigilant you are, there's always one. Uh, but it won't happen again. She'll be out on her ear before you can say, uh... I hope she hasn't upset you too much. Oh, Felix. Stop being such <laughs> a grizzly bear. This woman is my guest. She's your guest? But that ain't possible. This scandal didn't even know you three hours ago. Be quiet, Felix, before you offend someone. Miss Romanski, please. This maniac turned up earlier and tried to wreck the fountain. If it wasn't for the... I said enough, Felix. 
this chicken slaughter with the respect befitting one of my friends. Don't touch and don't swear. Have I made myself clear, Mr. Smetana? Yes, yes, crystal clear, Madam Romansky. Please do accept my humble apologies. Very good, Felix. You may go now. Hmm. I like Miss Romansky. Feisty old lady. Um, so yeah, we have to call the robot butler. I know you can ask him about it. Uh, just go all the way back to the hotel and tell him, Oh, Helena wants to go back inside. Can you come pick her up? And he'll say, No, uh, I haven't heard the bell ring. Um, but I don't really feel like running all the way back and forth. So I'm just going to see if he'll come instantly. So it was all also called James's Bell, so it's very obvious. Let's see if I can bypass that whole sequence of running back and forth. Maybe I can't. I'll go. Uh, maybe I do have to talk to him. A tad annoying. Rang the bell, why didn't you come? James, what are you waiting for? Don't tell me you didn't hear the bell this time. The bell did indeed ring, but it is very windy outside, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it is a bit gusty. But what's that got to do with it? Madam doesn't understand. She says an automaton doesn't need protection, but my insides don't like the salty wind. I'm afraid to go out, you know. And if you wore my mask to protect you against the salt, would that help? Oh, most certainly. Awesome. Off you go. Katie Poo. So, have you met her yet? This Helena person. What, what's she like? Does she remember Frank? Hi, Mom. Yeah, sure. I met her, and yes, yeah, she's living in Arobad. You can thank Frank for me again. I'll remember to, honey. So, what's Arobad like? Maybe Frank can take me there one day. It's this seaside resort, Ma, but it isn't what it used to be. You'd be real disappointed. Maybe you're right. So, when are you coming home? Is that mission all over, then? Not really, Ma. I still haven't found the air I'm looking for to wrap up the case. Helena Romansky's a uh, kind of detour here. Listen, Munchkin, I get the distinct impression that you're being led up the garden path. Why don't you just come home, tell your boss this air just doesn't exist, that you've done all you can, et voila. Do you want me to call him for you? Ma, please, don't get involved. Looking for Hans Varlberg is what I'm being paid for, but I also just want to find him for myself. Honestly, you're just as stubborn as your father. Don't complain that your mother didn't warn you. Don't worry, I won't. And there we are. Miss Romansky. I do like the character development that Kate gets. Uh, she starts out as rather whiny, um, no confidence, uh, not able to do much for herself. Like in the beginning when she needs that kid's help to lift an oar <laughs> and things like that um by the end she uh she's m much more hands-on and, and able to take charge of situations which is great so let's have a chat with miss romansky and ask her if she wants to come with us it's a real honor to meet you madam romansky people have told me so much about you mm. people still talk about me oh dear of course. 
Everyone tells me how wonderful you were. How you were one of the greatest singers of the century. Ah, so I was, my dear. But surely you didn't come here just to dig up the past. Not entirely. You must have had a fantastic life. So exhilarating. Ah, much more than you could ever imagine. I used to sing the finest melodies of the moment in the most fantastic theaters around the world. I have been hailed by kings and crafted by princes. Grown men would sink to their knees when they heard the first notes of my recital. My voice could break crystal glass and hearts, many hearts. I'm not surprised. Then one day sickness steals away the gift life has given me. My voice started to betray me. I started to get migraines. My health failed. They sent me here to let the spa town weave its healing spell. I was only going to rest for a month, but then the month became a year and the years get longer. But you look so healthy to me. Oh, thank you, my dear. Uh, have I introduced myself? I'm not sure. Let's. And like I said, I'm a lawyer, and to tell you the truth, I don't know much about classical music. But after talking to Mr. Borodin and Mr. Malkovich, they really made me want to hear you. Oh, you are too late, my child. Ten years too late. And how is dear Frank? Do tell me. Oh, I am still angry with him for leaving like that to America. Don't be offended, but I never suspected those cowboys actually have an ear for real music. I don't think he sings much anymore. The odd gala, the odd charity event. Anyway, he sends his love. Oh, his love? <laughs> Do you hear that, James? There is someone who still loves me on the other side of the Atlantic. And never said they didn't, madam. What about this other gentleman? What is his name? Borodin? Do I know him? Yes. You once sang in Komkalsgrad. An incredible recital, if the director's account is anything to go by. If you only knew how moved he still is. He's another one who still adores you. I must confess that seeing one of my greatest admirers once more would do wonders for me, but... Ah, oh, my voice. It is so... Ah, uh, I couldn't. Of course you could. Um... Let's see if we can ask her about Hans, because the... Like, obviously she knew him, uh, but the automaton said that she didn't like talking about him. She actually didn't want to talk about him. Strange. I get the impression that Hans Vorarlberg turned up here, too. You know Hans Vorarlberg? Not exactly. I'm looking for him to sort out this inheritance case. But I've had to snoop around in his past a bit to get on his trail, and I guess he's kind of a close friend now. You knew him, didn't you? Oh, yes. I knew Hans Wallerberg. Do you hear, James? Ah, oh, if you had had the chance to meet Hans. My Hans. Oh, my God. What has become of him? Where is he? As questions go, madam, that one is not without certain complications. I'm sorry, but I have no idea. That's the goal of my mission, to find Hans Varlberg. That's why I have to get back to my train as quickly as possible and to get out of Komkalsgrad. And you cannot find him without the train? The train is one of his last inventions. So is Oscar, the automaton engineer. I get the feeling that the two of them are going to lead me to him. Did you hear that, James? I might see Hans again. I have dreamed so long of meeting my dearest sweetheart again. Oh, if only I could sing. If only I were in Paris, I would ask George for that miracle cocktail. The one that only he knew how to make. Wouldn't I, James? Yes, madam. As you have frequently said, without that famous cocktail, your French tour would have probably been cancelled. I don't understand. An extraordinary tale, my dear. It was December, and it was terribly cold and damp. 
I had to play the role of Tatiana that evening at the opera. But since the morning, I had lost my voice. It drove me completely mad with worry. I don't know how George, the barman at the Moritz Hotel, heard about my affliction, but he brought me up a cocktail that he had invented. A strange concoction. But it turned out to be a miracle cure. My voice returned to me in an instant. That's amazing. That's just what we need. We're going to mix you up a cocktail. <laughs> ah, my dear child. It is impossible. George never told me the recipe of the drink. He loved to keep his trade secrets. He said it made him absolutely irreplaceable. <laughs> well, I'm going to get George to tell me. He hasn't yet met with my powers of persuasion. Indeed. Um, George in Paris. I'll let you get a bit of rest. Thank you for listening to me. It Meanwhile. was a real pleasure, my child. You are a charming young lady, and simply talking to you has warmed my soul. So we'll need the um, recipe of George in Paris. Luckily, we found this uh, brochure. 